President Biden has declared his administration is, quote, unwavering support for Israel. The White House says the president and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu have committed to stay in regular contact as Israel's war with Hamas unfolds in real time. CBS News Chief White House Correspondent Nancy Cordes reports on this. President Biden huddled with his national security team today and spoke with European allies, looking for ways to head off a wider conflict. This is not a moment for any party hostile to Israel to exploit these attacks to seek advantage. The Pentagon has already begun airlifting U.S. weapons and munitions to the Israelis. And a carrier strike group, six U.S. ships plus jets, has nearly reached the eastern Mediterranean. Its goal is to serve as a deterrent to attacks by Hezbollah or Iran. The U.S. Army Secretary warned today that the Pentagon will require more funding to fully supply both Israel and Ukraine. We need additional support from Congress, so I hope we'll see that soon. But that's not possible right now because the House is still without a speaker after Kevin McCarthy was voted out last week. Today, McCarthy joined other Republicans blaming Mr. Biden for Iran's role in the Hamas attacks. The U.S. arranged a prisoner swap with Iran last month that freed up $6 billion in Iranian oil money. They are wealthier, richer and stronger under this Biden administration. Accusations like that drew fierce pushback from White House officials. This money was always earmarked only for humanitarian purposes. It doesn't go to the Iranian regime. It goes through approved vendors right to the Iranian people, who we have no beef with. She was full of life. Brandeis University professor Elon Troen says his daughter, Deborah, was among the Americans who lost their lives this weekend. She lived with her family on a kibbutz near the Gaza border. She could only say to us that um, I hear glass breaking and voices in Arabic and the shooting. Troen says he was on the phone with his daughter when she and her husband were killed and her 16-year-old son shot. It was she who saved his life by design, falling on him, and the bullet that reached his abdomen came through her. Nancy Cordes joins me now. Uh, Nancy, what, what is the White House actively doing now to support Israel, and what is it prepared to do? Well, there's the material assistance, Jeff, that comes in the form of weapons and munitions that are already on their way to Israel. They're being airlifted there. And of course, uh, these ships are being sent rapidly to the eastern Mediterranean to serve as a deterrent to any bad actor who might be looking to exploit the situation or to get involved in it. Um, and then there's also the symbolic efforts that the White House is making. For example, we just got a statement late this afternoon uh, from the leaders of not just the U.S., but also Italy and Germany and the U.K. and France, basically uh, in a united fashion expressing their support for Israel, working to rally support for that nation in much the same way that they have done for the last couple of years for Ukraine, to show that Israel has some very powerful allies who aren't going to be going anywhere. Nancy, we saw Kevin McCarthy in your piece there. The, the House currently lacks a speaker. Talk about, well, first of all, I mean, I, he initially said he didn't want to run again. I've seen some reports that saying he's open now, right. if maybe allies want him to. What, what's happening there, and, and how limited is the U.S. in taking action because they don't have a speaker right now? Right. House Republicans are, are meeting tonight to try to work through this. They realize that they now have to work much more quickly than they even anticipated to put a speaker in place because uh, the House is really stymied without one. It can't pass major pieces of legislation. Uh, there are some who say uh, perhaps it does have that ability, but this has really never been tested before. We've never really been in this situation before uh, where there was no House speaker for a pro prolonged period of time. So most members of the House believe that you've got to have somebody in place for the House be to be able to, to do uh, its job, to function as it normally would. Uh, and until that time, U.S. officials say they do have some pots of money they can draw from when it comes to uh, supplying munitions to, to not just Ukraine, but to Israel as well. But they say in fairly short order, they are going to need Congress to approve more funding so that they can start boosting production to make sure that they are producing enough weaponry and ammunition 
for the possibility of a prolonged conflict both in Israel and in Ukraine. Nancy, appreciate you being with us tonight. Thank you very much. You're welcome.